In this video, I'm going to talk about 10 macOS maintenance tips that are designed to help maintain any sort of MacBook, iMac or other computers running macOS system on their peak efficiency. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Mayank and I'm a technologist based in Singapore. And on this channel, we explore various technology topics, tricks as well as devices to help you become tech smart. So let's start the video with our first trick, which is volume first aid. The macOS built-in disk utility application has a first aid function which helps you diagnose various kind of errors that macOS has created or any other software might have created as well as it helps you find out if the disk is going to go bad soon enough so you can really back up the data. So to do this, I'm going to open Spotlight by pressing command and space. Let's type in disk utility and let's click on it. On the left hand side of the window, you can see that we have various volumes and partitions that you might have as per your own system. Now you can click on any of these and then on the right side top bar, you see there's a first aid button. All you need to do is click on it, then follow the steps that actually shows up and it will show you that if it is fixing the errors or you know, your disk actually needs a replacement. Also, this is something that you should repeat for all the partitions that you have. So I have two, I'm going to repeat it for both of them. Second is manage your storage. A full hard drive can make any computer slow down. So it's always a good practice to manage your storage well and make sure that you have plenty left. Now to do this, macOS has a built-in storage management application which can help you find which particular kind of file you might really want to delete as well as make some storage on your system itself. Now to do this, we are going to open Spotlight again, type in storage management. Once we do that, storage management application will show up. Once it shows up, we click on it, open it. Now we have various options on the right side in the application itself. First and foremost, you should always store some files in iCloud that will actually offload a lot of load from your system itself and that will create some space on your system. That's one. If you have iCloud subscription, nothing like it. If you don't, still you can use it till some extent. Now the second one is optimize. You should optimize for sure all the files. That way it is going to optimize the space. It is going to take some time to really go through all the files, but yes, it is going to be effective for your system as well. Third is review files. Once you do that, it will open up documents on the left side of the window. Then it will start showing you various options like large files and things like that. There you can really explore all the large files. You can really sort by time and things like that. That way you, you get to know, okay, these are the major files that are actually taking a lot of space. Otherwise you can explore the whole system itself and start deleting files. Third point is make sure that your system keeps on updating itself. Keeping your system up to date can keep it running smoothly as well. And it is super easy to really do that. Now to do this, all you need to do again, open spotlight, open system preferences. Under system preferences, there's a button called software updates. Now let's just click on this. It is showing me that I have an update that I need to install. But to make things more efficient, what I can do is I can check this checkbox on the bottom, which allows to install the updates automatically in the background. And it is very efficient. It is not going to take a lot of time and load. And it is very smart as well to really keep things updated. Now fourth is to reboot regularly. Well, yes, rebooting your computer is actually very important because computer tend to generate a lot of cache files, caching just to remember what you are doing. And let's say you have logged in into some application and things like that. It builds up that much of data and keeps on building that much of caching in your system, which tends to slow down your system a lot as well. So it's always a good idea to reboot your system so that your system can really delete all the temporary data that it was storing on your hard drive. And then it can reinitialize all those applications and all those processes that it was running. And that way the resources it was taking earlier, it is going to reduce further a lot as well. Now fifth is to re-index Spotlight. So in this video, I've mentioned Spotlight a lot and I've been using that a lot. I'm pretty sure that you use Spotlight a lot as well to open up application, to find a file, find an email and things like that. But there's no straightforward way to re-index Spotlight. Now, why it is important is just to give a reboot kind of stuff for the database of Spotlight. Now, why is it important to really re-index Spotlight? It is crucial because in short, it is going to increase the speed of your system and as well as it is going to give a reboot to the database of Spotlight, which is going to increase the efficiency of Spotlight as well. And then hence increasing efficiency of your, you know, opening applications or anything similar, as well as it is going to remove the data of those applications. Let's say you installed something that was actually there indexed in the Spotlight but you deleted it in the wrong manner or something like that. Or let's say you uninstalled it, but it still have some files as caches left into the system. In that case, you don't want those particular files to be really in the database of Spotlight and that is going to really help you to clean up the system in a way. Now, how to do that? Simply open Spotlight, type in system preferences, 
click on spotlight here in system preferences now we have two tabs here first one actually shows you all the list of items that it is actually indexing you can choose here that you don't want to index let's say you you have certain things that you don't want to index you can simply play with that or remove that for now and see if that actually works for you that is going to help that's one for sure second click on the privacy tab add the whole hard drive like this once you have done that, it is going to take some time to de-index and you know clear the database as such of Spotlight. After that, click on minus and remove the hard drive from privacy as well. These steps itself will give a reboot and re-indexing of the database for Spotlight is going to happen. Now, sixth step is to check the login items. So whenever you turn on your computer, you see a lot of applications are starting up with that as well. That is what login items is. So a lot of application developers actually think that most of the applications that they're developing we as the user should be using it as soon as you know we simply start the computer itself. We may or may not really want it but it does take up a lot of resources in terms of memory as well as the CPU utilization as well. That slows up our booting time for the whole system as well. Now to take control in your hands all you need to do is open up system preference again the same way. Now once you open this up go to users and groups click on your username and now you see that there's a tab called login items click on that once you click on that you will see a list of application that actually boots up as soon as your system is logged in or your account is logged in in this mac os that leads to slowing up of your login experience so instead of that what you can do is you can remove all those applications i personally choose not to really give any application such access so it's better to remove everything that is in under now seventh is to close application instead of minimizing it Yes, on Mac OS, it is actually very tricky to close applications because if you click on the red cross button that is there on the top of the window, it is not going to close the application. Most of the application is going to really minimize and you can still access them from the dock and they are running in the background. They are taking your memory, by memory I mean RAM, as well as some caching memory and on top of it, some CPU utilization in the background as well. Instead of closing it using the cross button, what you need to do is press command plus Q. That is going to kill the application or basically close the application instead of of minimizing it now let's say you have accidentally clicked on close instead of really pressing command q how to close this what you need to do is it must be there in the dock right click on the application and then there's a quit button simply click on that and that will close the application you will see the difference yourself eighth is to clear your caches applications that we use in our systems they tend to create a lot of temporary files these are called caches they are mainly created to store the application state as well as password or your history and things like that by the time these files become huge in size so it is always a good practice to remove them from time to time so that you create more space for your system now to do this open finder once you open finder in the menu you have a go option click on that then in the bottom you have go to folders click on that on this address bar you need to type tilt slash library slash caches then click on go button once you do that you need to be very careful because you are taking control in your own hands what you need to do is basically find those application folders which you are not using or you, you might have uninstalled still have those files on the system in that case you can simply go ahead and delete those files that is going to be just okay but if there's an application that you're using do not delete those files that can really cause problem to your system as well ninth is perform a memory reset there are two elements is mac memory that we are with the age but a quick reset handles the problem very well. First is NVRAM, second is PRAM. Both are used by macOS to really retrieve those settings that it needs quickly. Now, to do this, all you need to do is shut down your system, completely shut down. Once you have done that, press Option, Command, P and R. All these four keys, keep on pressing all together. Then simply press the power button on your system so that it boots up. Keep, in, keep on holding all the four keys for 20 seconds. Once you have done that, simply release these keys. You might notice that your system restarts again, but that is actually resetting the memory as well. Another thing that you need to take care of, consider it as a bonus is SMC. SMC is actually used to manage heat and power supply of your system. So if your system is heating up a lot, in that case, you can try this. To do this, all you need to do is first shut down the system. Once you have shut it down, press Option, Control and Shift key. Keep on pressing them on the right side of your keyboard, not the left side on the right side of your keyboard keep on pressing them for seven seconds simply press the power button again and then wait for another seven seconds while you're holding these three buttons and then simply release them wait for a while then turn on your system that itself is going to reset the smc and you might really see some improvement in your system as well tenth is to offload large applications now we all suffer with this that macbook has lower storage as well as macbook air has very less memory as well so how to really tackle that for this, I would recommend getting a SSD pen drive, which is actually much easier to really find and it's, it is cheap as well in market nowadays. 
simply get one, plug it in and install the heavy applications on those SSD drives as compared to your own applications drive of the system. For that, all you need to do is while you're installing the application, copy the application directly to the SSD drive instead of installing it on your system. It will work just fine from there as well. I hope you like this video. Do share, like and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next week.